So today I'm going to show you how to make these clear sheets with different designs from your different stamping plates on them. These are great to see how much of a given design will fit on your nail or to plan your manicure or to just flip through something that's easier to flip through than your binders of heavy plates. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to get your plates out. These are all maniology plates and plates of this size uh, fit six to a sheet, a regular sheet of paper. The larger ones from Clear Jelly Stamper, for example, fit three to a sheet of paper and the small little round ones or the small square ones fit 12 to a sheet of paper. And I'm just taping these down nice and straight so they won't move around when I'm cleaning them and scanning them and so that I can ensure that they are evenly spread out which will make them look nicer later. Make sure they're pretty straight and lined up with the edge as well. So you are going to want to clean them really well. I'm using my acetone pump bottle here. Um, I'm just using acetone. Some people like to use rubbing alcohol on top of the acetone to make it extra shiny. The important thing is that there are no bits of polish or dust or smudges or anything on the plates because those will show up when you do the scan. You can edit them out in Photoshop, but it's easier to just not have to do that in the first place. So just can clean them really, really well. So once you've got them all clean, you are going to scan them. Now every scanner is different, so I'm not going to show you how to do that. So even if you don't have Photoshop, you can get a free trial for seven days. And um, if you want it for more than seven days, you can get it for $10 a month, not 21 as it shows you here. So you're going to click try it free. You want to select the photography plan, not the Photoshop plan, because the photography plan will get you Photoshop as much as you need. And if you need it for more than seven days, or if you want to, if you forget to cancel your free trial, it's only $10 a month instead of $21 a month. You don't need the more than 20 gigabytes of storage for this particular project. That's really the only difference we've got here. So you're going to click start free trial and you're going to put in your email here. I'm not going to put in my email because I already have Photoshop, so I can't download a free trial, but this is where you would do it. And as you can see, it's free right now. And you, uh, once, once the seven days are over, you will have to pay $10 a month, but you can either cancel before that, or you can just pay the $10 a month and use it for one month. So once we've scanned it and opened it up in Photoshop, this is what it's going to look like. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to invert the image. So that's control I on a PC and command I on a Mac. Then you're going to go to layers, new adjustment layers, brightness, contrast, and you're going to want to crank the contrast all the way up, drag that slider up and drag the brightness slider pretty far down. You can play with that a little bit more in a moment. Then go to new adjustment layer again. This time we're going to hit posterize and this limits the amount of colors it's got. Drag that level slider all the way down to two. And that says you've either got to be just black or just white. And this is what that looks like then. And this is where we're going to play with the brightness a little bit. As you can see, you can get it really dark or really bright. And we want something in between. So you're going to go ahead and click on the eraser icon. And then click on magic eraser. And that'll erase one color all at once. You want to make sure the tolerance is set pretty high. I've got it at 85. And then just erase all the big black patches. And then you can erase the smaller ones by hand. This just makes it easier to see what's going on a little bit. Then what you're going to do is you're going to hit the new layer button. That's that little plus sign in the square. And we're going to fill this background layer with white. So we're going to scroll over to the colors. The default colors are black and white. Hit the little arrow to switch them. Select the paint bucket tool on the left there and fill the layer. Go back to the eraser tool. Change from the magic eraser to the regular eraser. Make sure you select the layer with your image. The default will be layer one. Now I've got mine set to pencil mode. You can set yours to brush. That doesn't affect very much. You can affect, drag, drag the size of your eraser up in here. You can also use the square brackets that are above the enter key to make it smaller and bigger as you need. And then just set to erasing. This part is pretty intuitive. Just erase all the little black marks that you've got. If you accidentally erase something too much, just hit undo. Either go to edit undo or hit uh, command Z on a Mac or control C. Control Z on a PC and just erase, erase, erase. Okay, so then I'm zooming in and out to make sure it looks how I want. I go to File and Print. 
and double check the print settings here. Every printer is going to be different, but you do want to scroll down and make sure that the scale is set to 100%. If the box scale to fit media is checked, uncheck it because that's going to make it slightly smaller and that's not what we want. Then you're going to go ahead and hit print. It'll give you this warning. You're just going to hit proceed. That's because you're printing it at 100% instead of 95%. Now you can use either an inkjet or a laser printer for that. It doesn't matter. What matters is that the transparencies you get are the right kind for your printer because it will be a disaster otherwise. And then go ahead and print. Again, every printer is different, like every scanner is different, so I can't walk you through this part. But there's plenty of tutorials online if you just Google insert your printer name here tutorial. So this is what it looks like when you're done. I'm putting mine into just page protector sleeves that you can get at Target or any office store or whatever, just to keep them protected and so that I don't have to hole punch them to put them in a binder. I've also put white pieces of paper in protector sleeves in between each one so that it's this, the um, sheets don't overlie each other and then you can't see what's going on. As you can see here, that would make it more difficult. You could just three hole punch sheets of white paper and put them in between or put white sheets in the page protectors with them. I like to do it this way so that the white sheets aren't shorter on the edges than the sheets in the page protectors and so you can slip your finger in between nice and easy. So there's a couple ways to do it that don't involve a scanner and or Photoshop. So the first way is going to be stamping and then scanning, which will give you a clear picture and you wouldn't have to use Photoshop for it. You could just print on. So same as before, we're going to start with taping and we're just going to go ahead and trace around all the different plates just to make, make a template so that our stamping is spread out evenly over the paper. And then take your plates off and you can just go ahead and stamp each plate in that spot. Now this is probably better for smaller collections because you do have to go through and stamp. It'll take a lot of polish and a lot of time. You can use either just a regular stamper or a giant stamper. Now this is something stamped on packing tape, which is what I started out doing, and it does work well. The problem is that it takes forever, and also as you can see here with bigger designs, if you don't have a giant stamper, it's hard to line them up. You can also do it on self-laminating sheets if you want the full sheet, which I'll show you in a second. Here's another one on packing tape. Um, this one looks nicer than the other one. And then here's a self-laminating sheet, laminating sheet that I did. Um, it took forever, and it's kind of messy, <laughs> and that's what made me want to figure something out besides stamping them. But you can just get the self-laminating sheets and stamp onto them, and the polish will be sort of sandwiched in between. But as you can see, it's kind of messy, and I got some dust and stuff in there. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I am happy to help.